Welcome to another video tutorial from 2dgamerguru.com. Today I'm working in Affinity Designer to create a weathered stone wall and show you the use of the gradient tool, the transparent gradient and grunge maps to overlay and add pattern to the material. I will be creating this as a seamless tile, commonly used in game art, but also a quick way to fill larger areas with a seamless pattern. I have a reference photo here that I use as a rough guide and as a source for my colors. I start with a rectangle set the dimensions in the transform panel. I want it to be an even 180 by 180 millimeters. I probably should have worked with pixels, but while I was recording, it did not dawn on me. I set the nudge settings to the exact 180 millimeters as well. This allows me to quickly create duplicates and move them from one side to the other with the exact position to make sure they work seamlessly. I'm using rounded rectangles to block out the brickwork, roughly placing elements to cover the area of the tile. Objects overlapping the left side need to be repeated on the right side. I use the notch tool to move them the exact distance to match seamlessly. Now that I covered the entirety of the tile, I select the rounded rectangles, cut them, Ctrl X and paste them inside Ctrl Alt and V. You can also just drag them inside the rectangle to create a clipping mask. When I select the square and duplicate it and move it over, you can see it tiles seamlessly on either side. On the reference image, each block is slightly different in color and shading from the rest, so I start giving my blocks different colors. Next, I use the gradient tool and give them additional shading. At the moment these blocks look extremely even. To give them a rougher worn edge I use the pen tool, create a line with uneven spacing between my nodes. This line will be used to cut the edges of the blocks. I give it a slightly thicker width and adjust the presser curve to add even more unevenness to this line. A random zigzag pattern will make the line thicker and thinner, adding even more unevenness to this edge. I line the two notes on either side to make sure that the design tiles seamlessly. I duplicate the line, make some variations so they don't look identical, flip them, change some of the nodes and reuse it. I create a duplicate of those lines and then expand the stroke, creating a shape I can work with in a boolean operation. Either the node setup or the pressure curve caused some issues, so I go in manually and delete those nodes. I could have looked for the problem and fixed it before expanding. It's just not that easy when you're recording a video and just shows that I stuff up as much as everyone else. It's just a matter of how you fix it and this was an easy fix and now I have a shape that I can use as part of a boolean subtract. I copied the shape, paste it and select the shape I want to cut it from, do a boolean subtract or to make it faster I select all my blocks, combine them, do the subtract once and then split them up again with a divide. 
That way all the shapes have an uneven top and bottom. I redo the gradient fills and then go in with the node tool to make some minor adjustments. Next up are the sides. I use the node tool and bend those, add some nodes, give them a little bit of unevenness. For the shading, I select all my blocks, duplicate them, combine them with a boolean add, use that shape in a darker tone, duplicate it again and move it slightly upwards. I get a line just at the bottom. If I select my two shapes now, use the boolean subtract, I end up with my shadow shape by moving it slightly over to the left. The light will now be coming from the top left and I can go in with the node tool and adjust the areas that need fixing due to the proximity of the tiles. I can also define the shape of the blocks a little bit by moving some of the nodes upwards to create a dent in the blocks, add some cracks and variations. Using the pen tool I create some irregular shapes that I can use as additional shadows. I use the transparent gradient to shape them from the top to the bottom. Seeing the light comes from the top left, the lighter part would be below and the darker shadow edge would be at the top. I set this shape to multiply so it mixes with the color below. I duplicate the shape, use the node tool to adjust it and make variations so the tiles look different enough, yet not too different. I try to create a consistent look while avoiding elements that stand out too much. When elements overlap the left side, I duplicate them and move them to the right side and vice versa. Before starting on the highlights, I move all the shadow shapes into their own group. That way I can just minimize the group, hide it if I need to, and it's a lot easier to handle. Alternatively, I could just take them and place them inside the individual blocks. I cut them, select the block and paste inside. I duplicate one of the shapes for the highlights, color it white, set it from multiply to screen and use the note tool to adjust the shapes. Using the pen tool I create some indentations, 
I give them a darker color, then duplicate them, give them a lighter color for the highlight at the rim. I fade that using the transparent gradient. I duplicate the shapes and reuse them in other places. At the moment the design looks rather clean. One easy way to change that is by bringing in a grunge image. This is a photo I took on one of my walks. I bring that photo in, adjust the curve to give it higher contrast. Ideally you want a near white background with the pattern in black on top. I adjust the opacity, set it to just 20% and multiply and it blends in with my design. I move the grunge image into its own layer, seeing I'll be adding another one to it. I duplicate my tile and test if it's still tiling seamlessly, which it is not. There's a problem with one of the gradients as well as the grunge texture I just added. I'll keep that in mind and fix it after bringing in the second grunge layer. This one is a photo I took at the beach. The contrast is rather high, the background is rather light and I have the dark elements that make up the grunge. I set it to a multiply and again adjust the tone curve. By increasing the amount of white in the picture the sand will be turned into a near white and with the multiply it won't be visible at all. So it's just the dark pattern that gets added. Quite often it's worth trying different layer blend modes. I finally set this one to color burn rather than multiply. To fix the issue of the tiling as far as the grunge images are concerned, I place the grunge group inside the tiles themselves and then move it via the cursor keys for the duplicate on the other side and place it inside that clipping mask. I do that for all the tiles on the edge. For the center tiles I just place one group on top of those blocks and the tiling works now except for the gradient. The gradient has a slight angle. If I straighten that one the tiling should work. I can now adjust the layers for the center without affecting my tiles on the sides. So the seamlessness stays intact even though I move the pattern in the center. I create a new layer and put my sides into that one and the base will be a separate layer with all the other blocks. A little bit of structure makes it easier to edit the file later on. With a pattern like this I most likely would edit the center and keep the sides intact so I could create variations. To add a bit more detail I create the growth on the stones. I use a simple circle with a gradient from grey to white. Duplicate the circle to make a cluster of shapes that I can then scale, lower the opacity and set the blend mode to overlay. I duplicate the cluster and reuse it in a few different spots. Playing around with the layer blend modes, the vivid light seems a little bit nicer so I stick to that one rather than the overlay and add a touch of Gaussian blur to finish these shapes off. I assign that to the group rather than to each individual shape. I lower the opacity a little bit more to just 40%. I add a mask to my grunge group that is covering the center. Switch to the pixel persona and use the eraser with a soft brush. That way it hides the grunge layers underneath. So if I take a strong brush you can see it leaves a line. If I use less opacity on my brush I can 
softly fade parts in order to create a more uneven look. While I'm in the pixel persona, I might as well add a pixel layer on top. Use a textured brush that is uneven and has a grungy nature. I use the paint brush and a dark grey and paint on top add some additional detail. Once I set this layer to multiply and reduce the opacity, maybe 50% will do fine. I get an additional layer of detail. I can do the same thing with a white and add some more pattern on top. Set that layer to overlay rather than multiply as I would for a darker color. Finally, a third layer which will be the color layer. I set the blend mode of this layer from normal to color, which results in a stronger mix than the normal or the overlay. I try to focus the paint on the center in order not to cause problems with the seamless tiling. As a final step, I reduce the opacity of this layer to 50% and have my seamless wall tile based on a reference image but very different from the reference image. To create this look I used vector shapes, enhanced them with grunge images, added more detail in vector format as it's easier to edit and finally switched to the pixel persona and added painted layers on top of the whole design. The result is a seamlessly tiling stone wall with a weathered look that due to its mainly vector-based approach is really easy to edit, add to or connect to other tiles. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please subscribe to my channel, set a reminder, leave a like and a comment in the section below to let me know what you would like to see on my channel and I will see you again soon.